What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. So today what we're gonna talk about is the access port and doing data logs. So real quick, I'm gonna go over the access port and kind of what you wanna have set up for uh, when you're doing data logging. This is normally gonna be for uh, your tuner or your e-tuner, your pro tuner. Um, sometimes they'll do some revisions on maps if you have any issues. And if you're wondering why I'm talking about this topic, it was because I've been doing a couple of revisions with uh, Eric from Torque Performance. On, uh, on my map, on my car. Ever since I did that fuel pump change, I kind of mentioned um, that my uh, air fuel learning ratios were kind of off. So um, that's like kind of the percentage of how much fuel it's pulling from the map or how much fuel it's adding to the map. And also I was getting some feedback knock every once in a while. So did a couple revisions and it's working a lot better. Um, I'm on the newest revision right now, so I'm gonna go run some data logs. But first, let me show you what you wanna have set up. So we'll go ahead and put our key in the ignition. And we'll look at our access port screen. So first off, you wanna to go to your gauges. So just go ahead and click the enter button, which is this guy right here. And that will get you into the first thing of the gauges. Now, if you go up to the top, you hit the up button, and you hit setup, you can go to change gauge layout. That's gonna give you an option of having a different number of gauges. For each one of these gauges, you can basically select like what you wanna have show up. So if you only wanted a single gauge, um, it would show you like, you know, boost, for example. Um, if I wanted to, you know, it will kind of give me what my boost is at. Usually I don't just have one gauge up. I, I like to have up six because I can, and that lets me monitor the most things on my car at one time. So I go ahead and pick six gauges. From there, these are the ones I like to use. I like to use boost. I like to use air, air fuel learning. I like to use air fuel sensor uh, one ratio. Up here, I like fine knock learn, feedback knock, and I like to have my intake temperature on there. Right now you can see my intake temp is soaring because the car is at idle. I have the Cobb SF intake box on the car. And as you guys know, when you're sitting at idle, that thing just likes to heat up and suck in all sorts of hot air. It's more of a hot air intake than a cold air intake. Oh. Usually your tuner is gonna ask you to turn, turn on certain things. So what you have to do when he asks you to do that, so I go back to gauges with this little button right here, okay? So I'm basically on gauges. We'll let this top piece go away, okay? What you wanna do is just hit the up arrow right here. Click it two times, go up to setup. Once you're in there, you go to, you hit the enter button one more time and go to configure data logging. Um, once you're on there, you wanna have whatever parameters your tuner is asking for. Um, each time they have a little green light, like if I wanted airflow correction three, I just hit the enter button and it's gonna turn that on so that it puts it in my Excel table um, in my data log. So this is what I have on mine. I have airflow correction one, I have airflow learning one, airflow sensor one current, airflow sensor one ratio. I go all the way down, I have boost on, calculated load. I then have feedback knock, fine knock learn, fuel pump duty cycle, ignition timing, injector duty cycle, injector latency, intake temp, MAF, MAF voltage, manifold absolute pressure, RPM, throttle position, vehicle speed, and wastegate duty. Now those are all the ones that I have on there. Your tuner may recommend something else, but that's what I have. Now, in order to enable a data log, all you have to do is be driving in the appropriate gear, or just if you're just doing a cruising data log, you just hit this button right here, the inner button the middle button. Then what you'll see right on the top, you'll see it showing logging. Right at the bottom, you'll see that it says logging at 10 Hertz. Okay, so right now guys, as you can see, this is how my gauges look. All right, so my boost is negative 9.90 because uh, my intake manifold or my manifold pressure is not building at all uh, because it's just at idle. My airflow learning one is at 1.56, so it's adding 1.56% of fuel to make my air fuel ratio come out 
2. Right now it's running at 14.24, but usually that's around 14.6. Um, find knock learn. You want to have that at 0, 0.00. Uh, feedback knock, you want to have that at 0, 0.00. Intake temp, lower number the better. Also another one that's good to have on here is dam. I don't usually have it on there because I don't usually have an issue with that, but most cars will be set to a standard number. Mine is usually set to 1.0. So let's get going. I'm going to turn this log off. We'll get out there and do a little bit of pools and do some logging. Okay guys, so just driving around really quickly, um, you can see that my intake temps have dropped a little bit. They're at 144, now I'm down to 126. Uh, it is 68 degrees outside, so um, I should be right around 78 degrees um, once the intake box gets a little bit of a cooler air in it. So let's go try to cool that off. And again, you'll notice just how quickly it starts to drop, as you can just see, some of those numbers change. Now on the air fuel learning, which is the second one down to the left, um, you wanna have that as close to 0, 0.0 as possible. It's not that big of a deal, but it just means that your tune is kind of spot on when it's, uh, when it's closer to that number. Um, basically that it's not, the ECU is not automatically adjusting and adding or remo removing fuel. It's not the worst thing because the ECU compensates for all that stuff. So hopefully we can get out here to Mexico real quick and uh, do some pulls. All right, guys, so we're driving to Mexico right now. Um, I got to find an open area out on these Mexican roads and uh, do a third gear pull. Now this is a five speed in my WRX. This is the 2014. Depending on your car, you're either gonna do a pull in third gear or you may do a pull in fourth gear. I know certain cars with a six speed manual, sometimes they do pulls in fourth gear. Also, it kind of depends on what your tuner is asking for. So what you wanna do is get down to a speed of, uh, you know, in third gear at 2,500 RPM. So right now that is 35 miles an hour. So I am going to lay onto the car. Uh, I am wide open, 100% throttle, and I'm going to take it up to 6,500 RPM. Now, in doing that, that is one pull. Now, the one thing I did forget to do is actually hit the damn data logging button. So, whoops. Uh, but yeah, you're going to do that. I'm going to hit my data log button right at around 2,000 RPM, and then I'm going to hit 2,500 RPM wide open throttle right now. So I am in the middle of this pool and basically we're looking to see that we don't have anything registering on that data log. So I was third to fourth gear, got up to, um, you know, 6,500, close to 7,000 RPM. And that is gonna be one pool. So after that pool, you can just go ahead and hit the center button again to stop the data log. Now my intake temperatures are down to 90. Um, it looks like that run was pretty good. I got a little bit of feedback knock at a negative 1.4 and a little bit of fine knock learn at a negative 1.4. Now learn that out pretty quickly, um, which is what the ECU is supposed to do. So I'm gonna take these logs and I'm gonna send them back to my tuner, to Eric, and he can make adjustments accordingly to the timing, to how much fuel is going in, how much boost is, you know, getting put into the motor, all that type of stuff, how to, so yeah, let's go, uh, let's go do another pull, do another one. Um, so it's getting a little bit of feedback knock right now, guys. Um, so I'm probably gonna send this back to Eric um, to get him to revise the map a little bit. He'll probably do a little bit of tweaks and then we'll do this same thing over and over again. Now, this is basically replicating kind of, uh, of what you would do on a dyno pool with your uh, with your pro tuner, basically. Um, I'm doing this because I'm doing e-tunes, and you know he can send it back a revision to me pretty quickly um, and make that revised change, and hopefully that's gonna uh, make the car run better. Already, I can feel the car runs a lot smoother, but I still do want to get some of these things just kind of fine-tuned out of the car. I'm just hitting that back arrow. I'm gonna clear it out one more time. Um, we'll do one more pool. That'll probably be it because, uh, I don't know, you know, how Mexico is liking me right now. Uh, I think it's a pretty good spot that I usually do this at. So, you know, find your little spot in Mexico to go, your little home away from home, 
and uh, do a couple pulls, you know, just be in a good area that you know is safe and that, uh, you know, you're not gonna have any issues. Um, yeah, so let's do this one more time. Uh, we're gonna hit data log, let that log start. 2500, right on, wide open throttle, 100% wide open throttle. another pool um, again I got a little bit of feedback knock so like I said I'm gonna send this map back and uh, we'll see what happens also it's a lot hotter out um, the other nights you know when I've been doing this it's mostly been at nighttime and uh, when I've been doing these logs I've been having um, you know cooler intake temps like around 67 uh, 70 degrees right now I'm running like 84 um, and it's a little bit hotter out so you know, sometimes it'll even be lower because it'll be in the 40s or 50s. Um, usually when it's colder out, you don't run into problems with knock as much um, because you, you know, you have a denser air fuel charge and it's cooler and you have cooler intake temps and engines like that, especially turbo motors because all this stuff is getting hot, you know, turbo is getting hot, it's getting heated up, sending all that compressed air into the intercooler to cool it off, hopefully and uh, hopefully that works. So um, hopefully you guys learned something here. Um, this can apply to you even if you're not doing e-tunes, this applies to you doing pro-tunes. This is why I recommend uh, always having your access port in your car while you're driving around. You never know, when you're just cruising around, you can have uh, little issues that you would not notice if you just have your access port in your glove box or you you know, you know, flashed a tune on your car and you just said, oh, you know, it's flashed, I don't need to look at it. No, actually, it's not a bad thing to look at it because you may need a tune depending on the weather, depending on if you did some part upgrade, you know, just anything really, you know, your air filter can be getting dirty, um, any of that stuff. Sometimes it's a good idea just to reflash the car or to reset the ECU, to reset all those parameters. It, uh, it gets your car running from a good baseline. Any of those bad things that it may have learned, you know, with being at a different altitude, being at a different temperature, if it's been winter for a long time or it's been summer for a long time, resetting the ECU is not a bad idea because it kind of gets to start over fresh. Uh, also guys, this is what my last run looked like, uh, my last pool. So you can just kind of see, this is why I'm, you know, sending back a couple revisions. Um, the boost, it hit 18.84 pounds. That's that number over there. This is the smallest number and the largest number right here. So that always stores until you hit that back button. Now, air fuel um, learning, one. At one point, it was adding fuel. So it was adding 6.25. Now, because it was adding fuel, it's possible that uh, Eric may, you know, add a little bit more fuel into those certain RPM ranges to, uh, to get that to come down. Now, air fuel ratio. This one, I mean, it's gonna change. It's always gonna go, from the lowest to the highest. This is the leanest, 20.33 that the O2 sensor reads. This is the richest that my O2 sensor reads, 11.14. Um, but this one, this is the reason why I'm sending it back also. Fine knock learn, negative 2.11. You don't wanna see anything there. You want it to look like this. Um, also the feedback knock, 0.00. .00. I had a negative 2.80. So, so now I want that to be 0.0, .0 negative 2. 2.80 is not the best it's not the worst um, but a negative 1.4 is pretty common uh, you know sometimes these can be things that uh, are picked up from road noise and stuff like that but uh, this was on a pool so you know I'm sending it back also intake temps the lowest it got the coolest it got was 79 degrees the hottest it got right now was 120 just sitting here idling again it is 67 degrees outside right now and that is the time it's 67 degrees and that's how it came in so yeah that just gives you a little bit of an idea you know normally I have about a 10 degree temperature difference on my intake temps with the ambient temperature outside so again guys I hope this helped out a lot um, you know if you have any questions about this you know you can ask me I don't know everything about this but you know I've done it a lot so maybe I can help you out or inform you on some other stuff um, if you want me to do some other, you know, things or more topics about this, you know, I can go a little bit more into depth about some of this stuff too. So anyways, uh, thanks a lot guys for watching my video. Later and peace out.